and welcome to Love Always Self. I'm Shira. Hi, y'all. I'm Karista, and thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Love Always Self. Hi, y'all. Hi. <laughs> oh, how are you doing today, my love? I am doing better. I'm always doing better after you get here. I mean, you know, you know it's like medicine, right? Being around the people you love. I know. It's like we get to do either or, right? Where we can either record in person or we can record. Um, and we actually use a service called StreamYard. Um, virtually. We'll, yeah, virtually, and which we'll link below in the show notes because, you know, it's good to invest in your podcast in the right way, when, especially when you're doing interviews. Anyway, digressing. Um, but it's just different. Oh, a hundred percent. Like yeah. the, the energy is different. The, the banter is different. Mm-hmm. You know, let's be honest when we are doing virtual, it's, it's a lot harder to do the banter because, yeah. you know, we, we sometimes talk over each other or pick words for each other. <laughs> and when we're virtually, it, it just, you know, the lag time, it just makes a, it affects it. So, it does. uh, I also think that it's easier to be in our energy Mm -hmm. yeah and riff off of each other when we're together too so i think these are better but you know we do what we got to do when we got to do it so i agree is what it is i agree (laughs) you know what's interesting is that when i first started channeling the first time i ever channeled um i was by myself Mm -hmm. and i thought it was going to be like really weird because that was during the lockdown situation and so afterwards when you started coming in person i was like oh is i gonna work in person like am i gonna be too nervous and I was like, no, she's my best friend. Like, she already knows. You're the yeah. only person I'm channeling in front of right now. So, uh, <laughs> and I actually did feel a little different in, and it was almost like, you know, not trying to be an energy vampire or anything, but it just, it felt like it helped, hmm. you know, like it gave me a bit of a calming feel. It like uh, amplified the effect. I don't feel right. like it was... Um, uh, drawing energy away from me it yeah. was like my energy plus your energy equals more energy <laughs> energy 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 <laughs> um so speaking of energy uh-huh uh want to talk about that today <laughs> oh yeah i'm doing good yeah <laughs> <laughs> shit <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that babe sorry <laughs> how are you doing <laughs> enough about me <laughs> oh I'm doing pretty good you know again I have to agree always better when I get to this point in my day or week and so it's it's it feels good I'm I'm good in this moment you know um yeah. earlier today I think just uh, it was it was weird being at work like time moved really fast and I I felt like I didn't get a lot done <laughs> at work yeah. it was just I don't know I felt a little discombobulated today yeah. but I'm good at the moment <laughs> yeah yeah you know in, interesting enough I did feel like time went by fast today and I definitely felt like I, I felt like I earlier I didn't have enough time oh I still don't feel like I have enough time mm-hmm. but it's it's like I lost time today what a freaking illusion we're living it is in, you know? it is it's like ugh. <laughs> Give it, just take the clock and throw it it's cool <laughs> We'll use sundials. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, how's your new alarm clock, right? Uh, yeah. Because you you stopped keeping your cell phone next to your bedside table. I would like to say that I stopped doing that. Um, <laughs> this is a transitioning period for me. I, I like to listen to Brian Scott read a book, mm-hmm. you know, when I go to sleep at night, which is definitely not good to put one of those little buds in your ear and fall asleep. That's not safe. But I, it's just so calming and so mm-hmm. soothing. So instead, I started asking my husband to start reading to me. Oh, and he's reading the book of Enoch right now, which yeah. is just like wild. And I'm like, how are you following along with that? Because it's a complex one, in my opinion. Uh, that is a, a book on my on my list that I want to get to. So maybe maybe I can convince him to let me borrow it. <laughs> I can't make it more than five minutes when he's when he's reading. Oh, nice. I'm out. Nice. Yeah. Is that the sound of his voice or is it the book? <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, plead the fifth on that I one. Plead the fifth. <laughs> Out of respect for the writer. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's uh it, it's <laughs> it's definitely like it's very informative for the five minutes that I think I hear it each time. <laughs> so it's like I'm getting microdosed with this information. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> 
Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, I don't really have a good segue for this, but uh, a week and a half ago, I was texting with a friend and uh my girlfriend, she's a psychologist. And so we've talked a lot about like empaths and, Mm -hmm. you know, compassion and creating awareness, self-reflection, self-discovery, all those, you know, joyful things. And I came across this article and we'll link it below. And it talked about uh, empaths. And one of the things that empathic people tend to deal with is hyper awareness of what's going on, whether that's the people around them, how they're talking, how they're shifting in their seat, if they're making eye contact or not, if they've done something just a little bit out of the ordinary, and these red flags go off frequently. And I thought this was really interesting because I felt like this helped me understand me a little bit more because I I do relate to uh, the empathic uh definition i yeah i i don't know if i've i haven't looked up the definition but <laughs> um how how i've heard it defined in the past uh being that you are more um uh, maybe emotionally or just more aware energetically of the energy the vibration in the room hmm Okay. And so I thought this was really interesting and it helped yeah. me understand why I need alone time more because, uh, my, my spouse is very extroverted, very outgoing, very loud, very action oriented, like always do, do, doing throughout the weekend. And I'm like, Oh God, <laughs> just sit still. <laughs> now don't get me wrong. It's not, it's not bad. Like I'm super grateful that he has that go get him attitude. Yeah. Uh, especially around the house. Cause yeah. he does more of the cleaning than I do. Um, <laughs> thanks babe. Anybody. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of weird that both of our relationships are like that, by the way. Uh, just putting out there, you know, gender it, roles redefined. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so interesting. Um, so I, I thought that was an interesting article to read. And then on top of that, while I was driving here, you know, I just let the podcast play and, uh, an episode of the morning microdose came mm. on and I can really, that's the name of it after I just said that. Yeah. Morning microdose. How weird. And the episode was take inventory of your own triggers. And I, I want to talk a little bit about that, but first I want to get your thoughts on this article. Okay. Well, I have a couple of thoughts. Mm-hmm. Bear with me here. Number one, I firmly believe we're all empathic based off of, whatever the definition really is. Right. And I say that because we're all made up of energy. We all draw into energy. We all exude energy uh, and we're interacting with it in some form or way or another. Now, I do believe that some are more sensitive Mm -hmm. to the energies that they're interacting with or exchanging with at any given time. And so I feel like sometimes when the use of are you empathic as a question mark, it is kind of a trick question. Trick question. Yeah. Yeah. Because we all are and we can all choose to feel into it or some might do do it more often and not be aware of it, which is why, you know, I love that we like to practice and promote the self-care and the self-love and the self-development and the self-awareness, awareness being the biggest one of them all, because it helps you learn how to do whatever it is that you need to do to protect yourself. And and I don't mean that in like a, you know, uh, fighting protection kind of thing. I just mean it in more of like a energy, energy protection mm-hmm. type situation. Right. So example, um, there would be times not knowing that I was so, you know, able and I was so mm-hmm. deep into my empathic, you know, abilities, um, I didn't know that. So I could walk into a room and I could pick it up and and I could read the room really well. Mm -hmm. Right. And sometimes if I walked into a room and a majority of those there were not in a right space, right, like a right headspace or maybe feeling a little off, I would pick up on that very easily. And sometimes it could alter the way I felt. And then I'd be like, wait a minute, why did I just get so sad all of a sudden? Mm. Right. So. Those are the types of things that once you become aware of it, you're starting to ask yourself the questions like, is this mine? Right? 
and, and just leaving it there in that question, let it ponder here. The first thing that comes to your head, right? Cause you're, you know, subconsciously, you know, whether it's yours or not. Mm-hmm. So that way you can decide, mm-hmm. Hmm, do I want to continue playing in this space or do I want to now exit the space? And then you can make the decision. I definitely agree that we all have uh, the ability to be impacted by the energies around us. I agree. I think we are all empaths. It's just to what degree are we uh, affected by the energies in the room? Because I know some people, they can walk into a room, recognize that something's off, but still just completely disregard it and be fine in their merry way. That's so true. Um, I know a lot of people like that. Yeah. And, and that's that's not saying that they're not empathic. It's just they're choosing not to be affected by it consciously or unconsciously um, or or even to be fully aware of it. Right. right. It, it could just be a conscious or unconscious dismiss. You know, I, while you were saying that, I was just thinking to myself, I was like, wait a minute. You could. There are some potentially, hopefully not, but there are some potentially that could uh, learn or bring about their awareness that they have empathic abilities. They start diving real deep into it. They become hyper aware and then it starts to impact them because they're not ready. Mm-hmm. They're not ready to take all that on mm-hmm. um, and absorb it, you know, and try to process it. So that's something to think about too. Yeah. 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 I, I think too, that uh, those that are uh, more greatly affected by the energies around them, I think that it's, yes, asking the question, is this mine or is this somebody else's? But then also recognizing that somebody else's anxiety may also be triggering your own anxiety because there's something for you to evaluate. Oh, good point. Seriously, good point. Yeah, I I honestly think that that's also something. Now, I'm going to go with the thought too, because sometimes when things get grudged up and you're not ready to like process it or handle it because you haven't been doing the work, you haven't been putting in the effort to know thyself and, and work through the things that have kind of been holding you back on a level, right? Whether or not, you know, you're ready to deal with it or not, you're ready to deal with it once you, you know, have realized that you have a trigger. It's a small rabbit hole, right? Like you Honestly, learn your protections and honestly, it'll help with guarding yourself to a degree, but maybe not taking advantage of the guards too. I, you know, I want to, I want to just touch on the not being ready. Mm -hmm. There's not being ready, but still being willing. Like there's plenty of things that I don't know if I was ready to address them, but I was ready to move past them no okay or like work through the tough part to be able to like help heal that like i was ready to experience the other side the other side of whatever it is that was like not feeling good yeah right that is definitely because nine times out of ten you're never going to be ready to re-experience something that no or or re-feel into or rethink about um you know because I, I hope it's not a re we all know it's not a full re-experience normally but you know you're never going to feel ready to want to look at the shadow mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. And, and that's tough because the shadow is a part of you that needs love and compassion yes it does yes it does speaking of compassion so This is where a little nugget that I heard from the podcast that I mentioned earlier, Morning Microdose, um, the, the guest made a statement of being an empath is not a superpower. Everybody is an empath. Having compassion is a superpower. Hmm. Interesting. So how I thought about that is that You know, when even if we are aware of the energies around us or that maybe somebody's anxious or upset or hurting, it's about recognizing that and not having judgment of it. Yeah. I I guess I wonder, like, when did it become a superpower to be compassionate? Well, and that's the unfortunate thing. 
Right. This should be our in our everyday experience and everyday practice. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. No, no. Uh, I just feel like sometimes we lean more towards making it harder to be kind and happy than we do allowing it, allowing the discomfort and the uh, sadness. Like we make that so easy to come into our space and sit in it for a much longer period of time than we should. And we make it so much harder to, to go to the happy place and, and enjoy a lot more than Mm -hmm. what we do. And, and this is coming from a non-judgmental place by saying that just because I do it too. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm, I'm a part of all of that. Well, I think also it's not just about compassion for other people. It's also self-compassion. So the inner and outer compassion. And it's when, when things are being triggered within us, again, it's a prompt to take a look at what is lying underneath that. And I just think about how, when we're not ready to look at those things, how we can just kind of stockpile those things. Yeah. And then it gets to be, (laughs) yeah, like this closet full of, you know, big and little traumas that we don't want to look at. And the closet door is like about to bust at its seam. And if you open it, it's all going to come tumbling down at you. And, and, and I wonder if carrying those pains, little and small, if those add to the experience and expression of lacking compassion for other people. Absolutely. It does. Because a lot of the times uh, those those experiences in pain um, or of pain is because somebody else has likely had a stockpile of their own experiences and pains and it caused that, it assisted in causing that pain to you in the first place. And now it's just carrying forward. And isn't that an interesting thought that the people that you're interacting with and having maybe what you would consider negative interactions with, you take things that they say and do personally when they are saying and doing things because of their patterns, of their negative beliefs, of their past traumas. Mm -hmm. And so if we could just take a moment to understand that if somebody's rude to us, well, oh gosh, they must be having a rough day. You know what? I'm going to turn the other cheek. Yeah. I'm going to let that slide because I'm choosing that and I am giving compassion in that moment by not perpetuating that rudeness and that negativity. Right. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you because if we could maybe raise our hands in the form that you're in today and you raise your hand and you say, you know what, I'm going to be a part of the, the cause of stopping the patterns that have continued over as long as I can remember, at least we're however long the history books go back. So we're, we're just going to raise our hand and say, I'm stopping this from this point forward. I'm not going to allow anything that has happened to me. I'm going to work on me. I'm going to, I'm going to get through the shadows that I have. And, you know, whether that's with assistance from others or with your friends and family or, you know, a therapist or whatever, but I'm going to work through that and I'm not going to pass it on to somebody else or act in a way that is now affected somebody else. And, and maybe just maybe by the time I get to my little life review, I don't have to experience anything (laughs) past a certain state (laughs) that seems you didn't maybe could have handled that better. You know, (laughs) I mean, trauma definitely begets trauma. Yeah. And it takes the, uh, work. Yeah. It takes awareness. It takes recognition and desire to change the pattern to create something different. So I'm going to reframe that. Rather than stopping the pattern, I'm going to create a new pattern today. Yeah. I'm going to focus on love. And when if somebody is less than loving to me, then I know I need to send them more love. Because I believe that that's really where all pain and trauma comes from is a lack of love. It's a feeling, a separation mm-hmm. from it. It's a feeling separation from it for sure. Like it's, it's the, I always keep pointing back to what Mount Glass showed me. And that was this, you're never not part of, mm-hmm. you know, that love frequency. You were still part of that. 
you just have thought and based on some of the experiences that you came here to have in the first place, um, for the most part, but you have thought that there's a separation from it. And so you feel so separated, you think you don't have it anymore. And so that's another tool to recognize that when you are always connected to everyone and everything and that you, everyone yeah. is from the same source, then what you say and do to other people does impact you. Yeah. Whether you know it or not. And here's a way that here's an example. So when you speak ill of somebody, you are stating low vibratory words and your body is responding to them as well as the other person. Yeah. So it's not just you being mean to somebody else. You are being mean to yourself as well. When you go into that metaphysical, uh, I, I idea of we are all connected. Yeah. That belief. So be kind. I know. Practice Let's patience with yourself. Compassion for yourself and for others. <clears throat> and let the world go round. And worst case scenario, just go back to that old adage. I'm rubber, you're glue. What, <laughs> whatever you say bounces off of me and sticks to you and be done with it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's the best. Oh my goodness. Hey, everybody. Guess what time it is? It's that time for the collective reading. Yes, it is. <laughs> so today we are using Kyle Gray's Angels and Ancestor Oracle deck. I was so called to this deck today. I have a whole little stockpile of, yeah, you, uh, you know what I'm saying? I got a whole little stockpile of uh, decks back there. Yeah, you do. And uh, I honestly, this one was on the bottom. Mm-hmm. of the stock of the stock of the stack and I looked at it and I was like you know I kind of keep getting messages from my guides they keep repeating things to me like we heard you we're listening but are you listening but are you listening <laughs> are you just gonna stay in your stubborn moments there I mean so much so that I went into the back patio the other day yesterday and there's a blue jay bird feather mm. right where I was gonna go sit I came across so many blue feathers this weekend. Only one in the yard. There was a there was like a, a raven feather, like a huge black one. It, it wow. had to be at least like 10 inches. It oh. was massive. I didn't touch it. Yeah, I didn't touch the one in the backyard either. You Actually, see with my your son picked eyes. it up and I was like, put it down. <laughs> you see with your eyes, not with your hands. <laughs> and he was like going to try to play with the dog with it. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that <laughs> but hold on like how many feathers did you pick up as a kid and you never got sick i know i, I know i didn't well my, my dog's getting expensive though he's kind of getting a little harder to keep alive sure, nowadays sure. You know but saying? you know i'm just thinking about like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they tell us "Ooh, gross well maybe maybe me touching that feather helped protect me and like boosted my immune system do you see what i'm saying <laughs> it's all about all the things that you've been learning over right. the years like it's all it's a stockpile of traumas and situations right. that have now led me to be like ew don't touch a feather yeah you know? <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> oh if it was only that kind of trauma i know right <laughs> if only that was it all right we're going for card number one card number one we have snake hmm. so um this card uh, on the bottom i'm sorry it says snake shed old skin uh, I love the symbolism behind snakes. Uh, I'm not, you know, I, I don't mind snakes either. This is weird. But <laughs> this is weird because we, we found a snake in a in one of our bug traps that came out of the garage. It's, it must have been in the garage. Mm. And it went through one of those like little sticky boxes or whatever for the bugs. Um, that it's like right at the edge of the garage door, but on the inside. Mm-hmm. But it was stuck in that and it swiveled. It swiveled. What do you call that? The, S- Sli- slithered slithered <laughs> slitherins got it um it slithered out into the driveway and it stopped and so when my son came over last night he was like hey did you know that you caught a snake and i was like i'm sorry what <laughs> yeah it was a freaking snake <laughs> yeah so this card uh what it looks like is in the background it looks like a uh, dream catcher so big round teal circle in the middle of the circle super thin light lines is a bunch of triangles. Is that, the, is that Metatron's cube? I don't know. There's a bunch of triangles on top of triangles uh, stacked on top of each other, upside down, right side up. I think this um, is 
inferring like alchemy. Mm, okay. Uh, I'm sacred mm, geometry, some sort. Exactly. And then uh, coming down from the dream catcher, there are two on the left, two on the right, three arrows like hanging down. And then in the middle is a bigger triangle facing downward again. Uh, and then on top of the dream catcher is a snake. I think snakes are really cool uh, symbolism because it's just like this says, uh, symbolizes shedding old skin. So mm-hmm. renewal, reinvention, and re reprogramming, you know, just stepping out of what is old and no longer serving you and stepping into the new. Uh, also, if you've ever seen like the the snake in a circle, like eating its tail, right? That symbolizes like the circle of life and that everything is connected. Okay. Cause I think there's also the flower of life, um, all at the back, the backdrop of the dream catcher. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. In yeah. the yellow area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I want to read. Okay. So I don't want to, I don't want to read the whole book because I think it's best that I don't, uh, take credit for the novelist here, but definitely, you know, check out our Amazon shop. Y'all can, uh, purchase this deck and then you have the, your hands on the whole book yourself on so, our website at lovealwaysself.com there you go there you go all right cast off the old reveal your true colors talents and gifts to the world that hit home in many spiritual traditions the snake offers powerful medicine in tantric teachings it symbolizes the kundalini mm. which is the powerful serpentine energy within that allows you to reach your highest spiritual potential that's right. Like Kundalini nice. rising, it's supposed to like sneak up through the chakras and up like the spinal column mm-hmm. and out. Out. So, yeah, uh, I, I'm going to read a little teeny tiny sentence from the extended message towards the bottom on this card. But it says, this is a time for renewal, abundance and connection. Mm. Let yourself be reborn and celebrated. Oh, I love that. That is I our third that. abundance card between the two of us today. Nice. Yeah, it is. Lots of abundance, y'all. Second card. Ooh. I love this one. Great teacher. We've seen this one before. Learn from spiritual experiences. So this card, it has um, a gentleman standing with to his side. So I can see his right shoulder. And he's kind of looking up and out of his hand is flying a dove. He's got super wavy hair, kind of has like Jesus vibes. Behind the dove is more of the flower of life. Um, doves, uh, represent like peace and, uh, love and connection. I was thinking earlier about how, how nice it is when we can learn from other people's mistakes. (laughs) (laughs) If only our youth, if if only our youth knew to really listen to those. (laughs) I mean, even now, right. Let's be real. Even in our adult years, like we still, uh, want to learn our own lessons and so uh, I, I think this is uh, encouraging us to really take a second and evaluate, do we, do we really want to go through that experience? Yeah. Or is there something that we can learn uh, from other people's past experiences, but then also connecting inward and utilizing your connection to your guides and your source for guidance, not your source, source uh, for guidance, and let the those spiritual entities guide you. Yeah, I agree. And and even with, um, I, I did hear in my head, and I'm going to look in the book in a second, but I heard in my head that it's almost like not just the messenger from the, you know, those that you cannot perceive, but also you might be uh, somebody that might be interacting with somebody that you're looking to be like a mentor or that a mentorship might be coming to you. So mm. um, for those of you listening or watching this, like that might be something that's on its way if you've been thinking about or seeking one. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, t- to the book. Know that what is happening around you is divinely inspired. Learn, learn from your current experiences, then share them with others. It's a little literal. Um, so... This card was inspired by Jesus. I was looking at it. I was like, look, it's Jesus. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It was one of the most widely knowledged and loved spiritual teachers of all time. But there is a great teacher in every tradition. 
And this card represents the one to whom you feel closest as well as the great teacher within. Nice. So I, I think, you know, one of my favorite things in there was the divine timing. Mm. The That the universe, <laughs> everything is happening as it's supposed to. Even if it doesn't feel good, there's lessons to be learned in that. And so it's up to you to gain those lessons and take that time and evaluate uh, so that maybe you don't have to have those same experiences over and over again. But I, I truly believe that the universe knows way more than we do. And so when things happen, like you get stopped at a red light, you know, and so now you're running late to work. Well, who knows? Maybe that saved you from an accident. I mean, seriously, though, like your higher self, also known as your higher perspective, mm -hmm. also known as your very zoomed out consciousness. It knows. Mm -hmm. It knows what's the what's the right thing to do. What's best. Let's just say what's best for you and your and your learning in this timeline. <laughs> it sees all the timelines. Uh, I want to read this one sentence okay. from the extended message. There is a great chance that if you've been having any challenges recently, you've surmounted them and allowed them to be vehicles to lessons that are helping your spiritual connection. Cool. So what I heard in that is that closet that you've stuffed full with all the little and big T traumas. Decisions. It's time to open it up. <laughs> Purge that shit. Right. <laughs> Careful with widening the door and just letting it all fall out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, if you can, pick one thing out at a time. Mm -hmm. But if you can't, you know, just get through it. Let it go. go. Or hire an organizer. You know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> get your support y'all yeah go go find a, a talk therapist counselor you know get your support team together hashtag the organizer <laughs> <laughs> all right card number three. Ooh, oh she fancy this is the oracle card wait for important information so on this card this is new one i haven't seen this one Me before neither. so in the background there's a big circle it kind of looks like I don't know, like, I want to say some fancy little architecture design things. Like, it makes me think of, what was Michelangelo? Was mm -hmm. it Michelangelo? Yeah. The Sistine Chapel, when they when they came and did the exhibit here, it has some of those same kind of designs on it, like the seashell type things. And then the top right and left corners, you can see stars. And there's a woman standing there uh, kind of facing a little bit to the right. Um, so you see her left arm. It has like a snake. Um, I was going to say there's a snake again. Bracelet, like armband. She's got a red scarf over her head, dark hair. And she has a bowl that she's holding. And it looks like there's steam or incense coming from it. She just looks kind of peaceful, like she's meditating. Mm -hmm. Or I almost want to say scrying scrying yeah yeah scrying ca casting a spell of some sort well isn't scrying more like looking for guidance like we would use tar uh, tarot or oracle deck um yeah. as a modality or it's like when you see somebody throw like chicken bones like in a movie right they throw the chicken bones in a bowl and then they, they can read your for you know like we your... can also call that tea leaves too <laughs> tea leaves that <laughs> I don't know where I got the other one from. I think I've watched too many movies. Blair anyway. Witch Project? <laughs> I'm more of like a sci-fi kind of gal. You know what I'm saying? Tell me ghosts are not sci-fi. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. They're, they're not. They're just on the scary side. I don't watch scary they movies. They are science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> don't care. Well, I don't know if they're fiction. They're terrifying. But... but they're not because what they need is love. No, no, no. In the movies, they're oh. portrayed as terrifying and they're nightmare inducing. So I choose not to watch this. Oh, that's fair. No, no. <laughs> I know that the real ones are not. <laughs> <laughs> I talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> There's that for some honesty, huh? <laughs> okay. Be open. You're going to love this. Be open and receptive to information. Gather facts so that you can make a decision that is in line with your integrity. Is this also not the second card we've received that has spoken towards being in alignment with something to do with integrity and, and what you want to do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I feel like this closely relates to Great Teacher, the second mm -hmm. card. So both the second and the third card are about gaining experiences and information learning from your experiences, making choices based on um, 
you know, intuition and spiritual guidance. And, you know, I keep going back to the first one, which is just letting that all fall away, all the old stuff, like the dead skin. You yeah. Know, take your loofah and scrub that off. <laughs> you know what? When I'm looking at the last two cards, especially, mm -hmm. it's almost as if your guides, what we refer to as Mount Glass here, is sending out the messages and then the oracle, you can be that oracle, is receiving it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. The snake, Marie Kondo. <laughs> Do that the on your closet. The organizer. Your well, the purging, closet. the letting go, yeah. the, the, you know, working through, like, I don't need this old dress anymore. Same thing. I don't need this old belief anymore. Yep. Yeah. It's so true. It's so true. Why are, what is it that you're holding on to and why? Uh, dresses from my twenties that I will never wear again because I was thinking about wearing them in Vegas. I mean, and every, I ain't that lady anymore. <laughs> we all have that pair of pants where we're like, one day I'm going to fit that again. So I'm going to hold on to it until I do. And then you're like, oh, look, I still have these pair of pants in my closet from when I was 19 years old and I'm whatever age now. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, well, I still have shorts from high school that I still wear regularly. My goodness. Okay. So... <laughs> I'm just going to say pat on my back for no fast fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Reduce, reuse, recycle. Extended message. <laughs> All right. Oracle deck. Extended. I mean, Oracle card. <laughs> extended message. Um, angels, ancestors, and the universe are speaking to you at this time. So look and listen. Oh, for important conversations, signs, and messages that will point you in the right direction. Okay, so remember earlier when I was saying that I feel like my guides continue to like very obviously send me things like so obvious and it like and we'll tell this story one day that I get a yes mm. immediately after asking a mm -hmm. yes or no question. And even still, I can feel my own stubbornness. And it's like, here it is again. Hello. <laughs> we are sending you the messages because you keep asking for them. We're, we're trying to be receiving? obvious. <laughs> right. Are you receiving them? Or are you just stuck in doubt and are keep dismissing? Mm -hmm. Exactly. I do it. We all do it. We all do it. <laughs> ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> we all do it. <laughs> we Unless you are lactose intolerant, which I'm sorry. Sherbert. 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 <laughs> Froyo? <laughs> is that an option? No, it's still does well, that have I mean, like does that have milk in it? Well, yogurt. Oh, true. My bad. Unless Don't do it's that. dairy free. But you know what? You know. <laughs> see, this is why it's better in person. <laughs> this see what I'm talking about? These little banters that we get when we're in person with one another. Oh. Uh, Guess what, y'all? It's that time. If you've been enjoying this episode as much as we've been enjoying this episode, <laughs> go ahead and hit that like and subscribe. Notification bells are very helpful to get notified for future content. Uh, feel free to share. We we do enjoy that uh, all the sharing and the caring and all the other fun things that are happening in our lives. And also all the new followers and new uh, subscribers. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome and thank you. So glad to have you. Yeah. Uh, we're watching it. So uh, feel free to comment down below, too, because we do actually read every single comment. Mm -hmm. We're a little busy. We both have day jobs. So mm -hmm. if it takes us a little while, please be patient. Mm -hmm. However, we actually read them. So and if you don't want to leave a comment on YouTube, you can also find us on social media at Love Always Self on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and Obviously, the YouTube shorts. Still haven't added that little TikTok note. That's okay. I said by the end of the year. We've got so, three more months. <laughs> One of these days. <laughs> oh, my God. We also have a website, guys. Lovealwaysself.com. Again, if you are interested in this Oracle deck, you can find it on our website, Shop Amazon. We do get a little kickback from that. It goes straight back to the podcast. We don't make any money on it. So, <laughs> so we true. just appreciate you letting yeah. us know by doing those types of things. Again, like subscribe, buying things off of our website. Uh, helps us know that you are enjoying the content and want us to keep going and Absolutely. producing. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Well, what what a day. What a day. It was a day. It was a day. It was still a day. is a day. Still is a day. <laughs> the sun is literally still out. <laughs> Behind clouds. That's nice. I know. Thank you. We need the <laughs> reprieve. My goodness. <laughs> Be oh. cool. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, let's practice kindness, compassion, patience with yourself and with others. And don't forget to love first, love last, and love always. Bye. Bye.
Hey, listener. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us in this moment. We hope you enjoy today's episode and we look forward to our next connection. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow to stay notified of new content from Love Always Self. If you have any questions or topics you'd like for us to discuss, please hit us up on any of our social media platforms linked in the show notes below. I'm Karista. And I'm Shira. And until next time, remember to love first, love last, and love always. Love Always Self podcast is meant for entertainment purposes only. We do not make any warranties about the completeness, reliability, and accuracy of the information presented in this podcast. Any action you choose to take upon the information in this podcast is strictly done so at your own risk, and we will not be held liable for any losses and damages in connection with the use of our podcast. Any and all medical concerns should be addressed with a licensed healthcare provider, as well as any questions that may be derived from the information discussed in this podcast.